Welcome to another Spike eBrew in a Bag video. Today we're going to do a five gallon batch. I have auto-tuned this thing so that we shouldn't have any issues with our mash temperatures. I'm going to do something a little bit different with the mash this time, so you're definitely going to want to check it out. How's it going? My name's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how-to videos and brew day videos just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. So this is a five gallon batch on the new Spike e in a bag system. I may possibly be the first one that has ever done this. So, cause I, they asked me if I would do a, a small batch and I said, sure, no problem, I'll, I'll uh, check it out. So I'm gonna try to do under 12 gallon or under 12 pounds of grain today. And so let me get set up and uh, we'll go ahead and get mashed in. I've already got my strike water heated up and all that stuff. So let's jump into the brew day. All right, so my strike water temperature is at 157, which is what the recipe called for. I'm using the Beersmith profile for this particular batch. Uh, scaled the batch down a little bit to below what I normally brew it at because I wanted to try to see what the minimum amount of grain that we could get out of a five gallon batch in this system and see, you know, see if it works or not. I'm gonna go ahead and set my mash temperature to 152. And let's go ahead and dough in. All right, so for this batch, I'm actually doing a New England IPA. I've been wanting to do one of those again for a little while. So I actually scaled down or modified a recipe, reduced some of the uh, two row malt in it to try to get the volume down below like 12 pounds. I figured like somewhere between 10 and 11 pounds would be a good test to see how this system works on maybe a little bit lower gravity beer. So I'll go over the details of the recipe here in just a minute, but we're targeting probably about 5.2, 5.5% ABV, something like that. So the water volume was nine and a half gallons and it's got a pretty good amount at that volume in the basket here so i'm going to go ahead and get my grains and we'll get doughed in here and we'll see what type of a grain bed we've got here once we do all that i'm just going to dump them all in because i think we've got plenty of water and it looks like from the amount of grains that i've got in here that it's actually going to be gonna be a fairly thin mash in here now I have made some water adjustments uh, I, I cranked up the calcium chloride because it is a New England IPA and I'll put all the details across the screen here as far as the, the chemicals or the salts that I put in the in here didn't have to go with any lactic acid because I had enough of those other salts in there that I believe the mash is gonna be pretty good now what I did a little bit differently this time is I'm actually not going to use the recirculation hose through the top up here I'm actually going to recirculate around the basket because I think that I can hold the temperature really well and do a mash. I mean, because, you know, you really don't have to be recirculating. I mean, brewing a bag systems or brewing a baggers have, for years have done just a, a bag inside of a kettle and no recirculation or anything like that. Just let the conversion happen. So that is what I'm going to do today. And I'm going to circulate around the basket and in... Heating up, I did notice that there is a little bit of circulation inside of the basket. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that will, you know, actually recirculate in the grain that way or not. But we're going to give it a shot and uh, see what happens. I'm going to come back and uh, test the pH on it and see where we're at. Because based on the calculations, I did a calculation in brewing water. And based on that calculation, it should be the same parts per million of all those salts in whatever water I'm mashing in. So the fact that it's the grain is not in all the water shouldn't really matter so we'll go ahead and uh, get this thing circulating and we'll be back here in just a minute to let you know what we come up with i'm going to check about 15 minutes or so into the mash and see what our ph is and uh, see how it's going but from the looks of it it's actually pretty decent thickness on the mash it's not too thin but i was worried about it being maybe a little bit dry but with the amount of grains that i think i have uh, in here i think we're pretty good so we'll be back here in a few minutes all right, so we're about 17 minutes into the mash. I got a little busy doing some other stuff and missed a 15 minute mark, but I uh, just wanted to let you know what the mash looks like. And it actually looks really, really good. Um, it's pretty thick, um, not too thick, but it has a nice uh, consistency to it, in my opinion, from what I'm seeing here. So it's actually looking pretty good. And I actually raised the basket up once just a little bit just to kind of let some of the wort drain out of the grain and then put it back down in there to let some more water and everything come in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take a sample of the wort here and get enough that we can 
do a sample here. Maybe just a little bit more. That ought to be enough. And let me grab my pH meter here and we'll take a look at what the sample looks like and uh, what, where we are with our pH. All right, looks like our pH is at 5.4. The brewing water calculation was 5.37. So I am good with that. Anywhere between 5.2 and 5.6 is going to be a conversion. So looking good so far. I'm happy with the results on that. Okay, one thing I was wondering about was how is the temperature going on this thing? And it looks like in the center of the mash there, it's about 150 degrees, 150.1. And then if I move out to the outside edge here, we're looking at uh, about one, almost, yeah, 151.2, 1.7. Uh, actually, I was touching the side of the basket there. So about 151. So might actually bump the temperature up by about a degree or two on the controller just to handle that offset. I don't think 150 is a, is a bad temperature, but I'm actually trying for a little bit more body in the beer than that. So I'm going to bump it up to 154 and then come back and check it here in another 20 minutes or so. All right, so it's been about uh, 15, 20 minutes since I cranked up the temperature to 154. So let's take a look at what the mash temperature is looking like now. So now we've got uh, 152, 151 point 9, point 7, 151.2. So looks like there's about a two degree differential, something like that, between the liquid. Now that's almost up against the side of the kettle there. So looks like there's about a two, deg two degree differential between what's in the kettle outside of the basket and in the basket itself, from what I can tell. I'm going to give it a stir real quick and see what the temperature looks like after doing a quick stir on it. We'll check that out and see if we can do a little circulation here and see what the temperature looks like then. So we'll check it out. Yep, so looks like it's maybe just a little bit warmer at the bottom when I stirred it up. So we're like sitting at 151.7, 151. It's dropping a little bit, but... Overall, it looks like it's holding the temperature pretty good. The PID has worked really great. It hasn't fluctuated more than a degree the entire time on the mash, so I'm happy with that. The auto-tune has worked. All right, so the mash is up, and what I think I want to do when I do the raise uh, up to 168 degrees for mash out is I want to actually start circulating over top of the grain bed. I had some concerns about channeling and whatnot whenever I was doing it uh, with doing the mash recirculation. So that was the reason why I went around the basket. But now I want to go ahead and circulate over top of the grain to try to rinse some more of those sugars out. We're not doing a sparge or anything like that. We're just doing a, a simple, normal, full volume brew in a bag. So I'm going to turn the pump off and uh, close off the Whirlpool valve and the other valve. So I don't have that hot wort spraying out at me. And I'm going to go ahead and take this off. The color looks good. Nice and... Uh, Milky white. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there and then turn my pump down. Let me pull this off here. And we will start our circulation over top of the grain bed here and see how we do. I'm gonna open this up and turn my pump on. Oh, that's probably a little bit too much of a flow there. Turn this down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and crank up the, the temperature to 168 and I'm going to let this thing recirculate. I'm trying to figure out what would be the best way to do this because the hose is maybe not quite long enough. And if I do that, if I put the hose up around the edge of the basket here, it seemed like it just wants to go down in one spot. So I have a little bit of difficulty trying to decide what I want to do, but I think most of the conversions taken place already. So I just want to circulate some liquid through the grain and uh, just let it do its thing here while I heat it up for mash out. I'm not too worried about any kind of channeling or anything right now because we're not going to be doing any kind of sparging or anything like that. So I just want to mainly try to heat up the grain and loosen up the sugars. So I'm going to crank it up to 168 here and we'll get it going. And it's kind of stirring up the grain bed a little bit, but uh, like I said, I'm not too worried about it because it is, it is pretty well converted already. So... I don't see an issue with that. 
it's still a pretty good amount of grain in the bed there so I'm gonna try to keep this thing up if I can I don't know that the hose will stay up really but maybe if I had a longer hose on there it might be better but this is what we got right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and roll with this and uh, we'll come back here in just a few minutes whenever I've got everything done heating up to 168 I'm gonna hold it for about 10 minutes or so and uh, do that well it's actually heating up I'll run through the recipe with you real quick here uh, so the recipe is a uh, New England IPA eight pounds of pale malt one pound of flaked oats one pound of flaked wheat eight ounces of carapils eight ounces of white wheat four ounces of honey malt and then for my water additions the volume of water was like nine point I think nine point five or nine yeah nine point five gallons so I actually added 11.4 grams of calcium chloride, which seems like a lot, but it was only a couple hundred parts per million whenever I did the calculation. Uh, 5.7 grams of Epsom salt and 1.6 grams of calcium. And that kept the sulfate ratio down to about pretty close to 100. I think it was like 89, something like that. And then for our hop additions, we're going to do a half an ounce of Centennial at boil just to give us a little tiny bit of bittering charge. And then uh, an ounce of Citra at uh, boil for five minutes. Uh, two ounces of mosaic at uh, element off or flame out or whatever you want to call it and we're going to uh, whirlpool that for 10 minutes at 170 degrees and then also another ounce of citra along with that so two ounces of mosaic two ounces of citra in the whirlpool and then uh, once fermentation starts i'll do two ounces and one ounce two ounces of mosaic one ounce of citra at the beginning of fermentation and then once fermentation is almost done then i'll do two ounces of citra and one ounce of mosaic about two to three days before fermentation is done so uh, we're talking about a starting gravity actually pre-boil gravity of 1038 I took a reading just a little bit ago at the top of the mash and it was actually about 1040 so I'm hoping I set the efficiency on the recipe to about 70 percent because I was not sure how this was going to go so uh, it looks like everything's going to go okay with that um, and that's really not too bad uh, 10 11 and a quarter pounds of grain in this big system so so far it's it's looking pretty good so we'll see what happens after i get this heated up to mash out temperature and uh, raise this thing up and let it drain out and then we'll take another reading we'll be back here in just a little bit all right so we've reached 168 degrees and it's been holding there for about 10 minutes or so uh, one thing that i did want to mention kind of reiterate that i talked about in the first look of this system is the taper of that basket and that is actually a design element that is made so that you can do these smaller batches like this so I, I just wanted to kind of point that out and just let you know that that was the case now i wound up leaving my spoon in here because it was just kind of circulating in one spot and i found that if i left my spoon in there in a certain area it would just kind of circulate everything over the top of the grain bed so i'm actually going to go ahead and turn off the pump on this and i wanted to kind of show you something really quick uh, stir up the grain bed just a little bit here and get it about where it's at so I'm going to show you that the grain bed is actually about that thick. So probably, I don't know, maybe four or five inches, something like that, somewhere around there. And had this basket been the full diameter of the kettle, we probably would only had maybe two and a half, maybe three inches of, of uh, space there. So, you know, if you're not going to circulate like I didn't do, I don't think it's too much of an issue, but... I just wanted to kind of point out that the, the grain bed was a little bit deeper because of the way this thing is tapered. So uh, maybe what might be a good idea for them to have would be some kind of a manifold or something where you could have uh, a hose hooked to it where it's sat just over top of the grain bed on these smaller batches and would disperse the, the liquid over top of it for doing recirculation. But is it absolutely necessary? Probably not, but it might be something nice to have if you're going to do some smaller batches. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing uh, disconnected from the pump here and hook it up to the whirlpool port down there and let's get this thing up out of here. This one should be a little bit easier than the first one because <laughs> it's, uh, it's not nearly as much green. So. so there we are. See, I didn't actually look like uh, it's going to take much at all to do that. Drain this out. See, it looks like it's draining pretty well. So I'm going to let this thing drain off for a little bit. Color's looking great down in there. Nice uh, milky white looking color. So what I would expect out of this recipe. 
So I'm gonna let this thing drain out for a little bit and then uh, once it gets drained, then I'll come back and we'll take a gravity reading and see what our volume is and see how close it is to what the system said that it should be. So be back here in just a few minutes. All right, something else I thought I would try is uh, actually pushing on the mash with a, just like a Rubbermaid container to try to squeeze the bag, so to speak. So I just wanted to kind of demonstrate, some people talked about how they thought that the hooks on the side of the basket were not very strong. I mean, I'm really putting a lot of pressure on this thing. Um, probably, I don't know, at least 40, 50 pounds of my body weight on there to try to squeeze this out. And this thing is, I mean, it's rock solid. I'm not having, I'm not having any concerns about it, like snapping off or falling or the, the kettle tumping over or anything like that. So just wanted to kind of point that out. Just some people had some concerns about that, but I honestly don't think it's an issue because I'm really putting some pressure on it and it's, uh, it's holding rock steady. So, all right, just wanted to share that with you real quick. Apparently pushing on the basket gave us a little bit more volume than the system calculated, probably pushed a little bit of liquid out of the grain. So we're just almost right at nine gallons. The recipe from Beersmith based on the equipment profile said 8.44 gallons. And the starting gravity on the pre-boil or the, the pre-boil gravity was supposed to be 1038. And according to my hydrometer, I've got right at 1035. So the overage on volume and the difference lower gravity uh, tells me that probably I could just boil for about 20 minutes or so, get the volume down a little bit and then proceed as normal. But uh, everything looks pretty good. I'm, it looks like I hit my, brew, uh, my mash efficiency of 70%. So that's good and uh, we'll get the boil going on and we'll come back and let you know how it goes throughout the boil. All right, so we've boiled off some and sorry for the noise, I gotta exhaust all the steam coming off of this thing. And uh, hopefully I can get one of those new steam hats that I saw. I don't know if you saw one of those or not, but they look pretty cool. Um, so the half ounce of Centennial is gonna go in now and we won't actually add another hop addition until at the end of the boil within with five minutes left and then it's going to be all whirlpool and dry hop after that so we'll be back here in just a little bit uh, instantly boiled down to about 1037 on the gravity something like that so we're pretty close to that 1038 that it said we would be starting with so i, I feel confident about and starting the timer now maybe a little bit low on the volume but i mean we've still got like eight gallons so we should be good all right so we're five minutes away from the end of the boil i just dumped in the citra hops the two ounces of citra uh, also turn on the pump to circulate some hot wort through the counterflow chiller to make sure all that stuff is sanitized and good to go. Uh, the only thing I did want to mention that I did kind of see on the controller was that uh, it hovered around 205, 206, something like that during the boil so far. And I, there's got to, there must be some kind of upper limit uh, calibration or, or offset adjustment that I can do. It was boiling as you saw with the mash uh, that temperature was correct as far as I could tell based on my thermo pin and all that stuff So, you know, I don't see an issue with that in the two degree variance between the outside of the kettle where the sensor was reading And the inside of the kettle where the grain was seems about right to me I, You know, that's what I would expect probably so I don't think there's an issue with that as far as that goes So it must be some issue with a, a high limit offset or something. I'll try to contact spike and see what I can find out I'm not too worried about it because obviously it was boiling so not a big deal So we'll go ahead and let the last five minutes go and then we'll be back here in just a little bit and uh, do our Whirlpool additions. We'll cool it down to 170 before we do the Whirlpool additions, but I'll come back and we'll discuss where we are at that point. All right, so we reached the end of the boil and I've got it chilled down to 170 degrees. I actually got the controller set to 170 to just hold that temperature so I can get a consistent uh, IBU out of these. But I've got uh, two ounces of mosaic and one ounce of citra. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in now. And we'll let that run for about 10 minutes. And currently it looks like our volume is just over six, just over six gallons. So hopefully we'll have about five and a half gallons in the fermenter. Um, I think there might be some adjustments that are needed to be made with the profile. If you're gonna do a smaller batch, I'll have to probably figure that out and, and see what I can come up with. But uh, I did have to boil for quite a bit longer in the beginning to get it, the volume down. And, and it looks like I'm probably gonna miss the gravity by a little bit. So this is probably gonna wind up being a session IPA. But that's the reason why I'm doing it. So I can try to figure out whether this thing will do a five and five, five and a half gallon batch and uh, let you know what I find out. So we'll, uh, we'll keep going with it and I'll let you know how everything ends up. All right, we reached the end of the Whirlpool, 10 minutes at 170. Actually, I clutched the element off and uh, it's dropped down to 155 now. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
crank our chilling water back on and get this thing chilled down to pitching temperature. And then once I'm done with all that, I will come back and let you know where the gravity ended up, where our volume ended up. And oh, I forgot to tell you earlier in the recipe, we are using Imperial uh, Juice A36 in this particular beer. So I, they tell me that I'm going to need a blow off tube for that. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. I'm going to put it in the one of my conical fermenters that is uh, about an eight gallon fermenter. So hopefully I'll have plenty of headspace to be able to deal with that uh, crazy juice yeast. But I'll uh, be back here shortly to let you know how it ended up. Okay, here's how we wound up. Five and a half or just under five and a half gallons in the fermenter. The OG wound up being like 1049, 1050, somewhere right in that range right there. So only two tenths below what the expected gravity was. I think there probably some work needs to be done on the profile for a smaller batch, maybe the amount of recoverable dead space underneath of the basket, because at the volume that's in the software in, in Beersmith, when you put the basket in, there actually is some water in the basket. So I think that's probably a place to work on with it. But I tell you for 11 and a quarter gallons in that size of a kettle with that basket and everything, I am not displeased with the results. I mean, you might be able to adjust your profile down to like 65% brew house efficiency and come up with a little bit better number. I mean, the difference between 70% and 65% is generally a couple pounds of grain anyway. So if you are looking at one of these systems and wondering if you can do five gallon batches, I think you certainly can. So once again, I want to say thanks to Spike Brewing for allowing me to be a part of this prototype testing. I do believe they haven't even done a five gallon batch on it yet. So I'm, I'm glad to stick my neck out there, be the guinea pig, so to speak, as Ben said to me. So I'm good with that. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you on the next video.